In this video, we take a big risk by driving our van to a very remote stretch of desert. This road is bad. And end up putting ourselves in danger for a series of bad decisions. Now I'm just thinking that this was all a really horrible idea. All because we were trying to reach a stunning but very remote campsite on the edge of the Grand Canyon that was recommended to us by a stranger. But they had actually started off well with zero clue of what we were about to get ourselves into. We wanted to fuel up before leaving because where we're going there might not be a whole lot of gas stations but this is going super slow. We're still in the middle of the desert in California. This little town that we're in here is called Ridgecrest, which is a little bit sleepy. There's probably only a few thousand people living here. It's just one of those small little towns that you pass through. Oh, oh no. No, 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 no. Not over the coffee. Let's hope that this is not how the rest of this day is going to go. It's crazy how right as you leave Ridgecrest, as soon as you lose that mobile signal and you know like, hey, we're in the desert again, you're amongst these mountains and the landscape changes to just barren desert and it is super impressive. The camping spot we're trying to reach is on the north rim of the Grand Canyon and from the research we'd done, we knew we'd have to go down some rougher dirt and gravel roads in the middle of absolutely nowhere to get there. We just spent several months driving and camping out in the wilderness of Alaska and Canada, so we figured we had plenty of experience and were sure we could manage this adventure just fine. This road is horrible, we should never have come here. We had absolutely no clue. On our map of the US, right now we are here. We're going to be driving through that last bit of California, then up into Nevada, past Las Vegas, then a little bit of Utah until we end up somewhere here. Which on the map is only this teeny tiny bit, but it is actually a whopping 10 hours of driving. We're not going to be bored because we are going to be passing by some incredible stops along the way, hopefully. <laughs> um, the first one of those being Death Valley. We're now driving through that valley. Look at this scenery. We're just driving up into the mountains now. Wow. Look at this, guys. Vinny looking badass with Death Valley in the background. This is pretty, pretty cool. Wow, look at this. This is just really incredible. We couldn't just drive fast here. I had no idea that there were sand dunes in that valley, but apparently, as evidenced by this big pile of sand, there are. <laughs> it just goes on for miles and miles, every direction you, you see. It's stunning out here, especially, I especially love those mountains behind the sand dunes. It's like the sand with a few bushes here and there, and then mountains in the background, and blue skies. It seems like something horrible has happened here. <laughs> There's a piece of cardboard. Children's shoes, adult shoes, and a small bottle of water. But no people, which is kind of suspicious. We weren't really sure when we read about the spot that we're heading to, the spot that we want to get to to spend the night, if we should actually do it. Because you're pretty far away from like everything, civilization and stuff, so if anything happens, it's not really a good position to be in. But on the other hand, then we thought we wanted to drive from Alaska down to Argentina to have an adventure, so let's have an adventure. I think I'm carrying about half the sand dunes in my shoes, so I'm just gonna leave them here. Oh my god, Nate. <laughs> it's just one shoe. <laughs> Why do I not have this? Why is it just you? <laughs> Look. I'm gonna quickly make us a small snack for when we are driving. Now I know you guys really love it when I eat cooks and there's always a bunch of comments saying he's such a good chef, but when we need quick snacks, then I cook. I'm gonna spruce this up a little bit though so it's not just a cup of noodles. Squeeze of lime, freshly ground parsley, chives. Michelin guide, I await your review. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Ooh, that looks fancy. Thank you. Might just be a cup of noodles, but with this view, it still tastes amazing. We just crossed the border into Nevada. Sun is setting outside and the light is just beautiful, but we're in Nevada. You know what that means. Are we going gambling and marrying a stripper in Vegas? You got one part of that sentence right, but the rest of it, not so much. Not much of a gambler? Don't worry, this is not what we meant when we said we were gonna camp out in the wilderness. This ain't it. This is just a pit stop because we realized we need some survival supplies before we can continue. And Las Vegas is very likely the last big city we will encounter before we go further east to the Grand Canyon. Yeah, I can hear you, brother. I know you have a fancy car, but there's no need to brag. Vinny? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're on the strip right now. Casinos everywhere, lights everywhere, cars everywhere. A the fake Eiffel Tower up there. <laughs> <laughs> the difference couldn't be starker than when we were like in the middle of the desert with nobody around, no cars. But first, we need some food. We're heading into the mountains of the Grand Canyon. It's freezing there now. There might be snow the next few days. So we need to make sure we're prepared. What do you think? I yeah, like beautiful. You look super Toasty. beautiful. Hey, I, I think like you look really one. cute with this one. I like it. A nice pom pom. <laughs> How much is my pom pom? Nine bucks. Winning at life. Oh, what a beauty! <laughs> I do look very wintry. Kinda like it. I couldn't find any jacket for me, but uh, I just bought an extra ball of red wine to keep me from freezing. Should help too. Since we're gonna be doing a lot of driving in remote spots coming day and weeks and months actually, well, because we're driving all the way down to Argentina, we didn't really have like something proper solution for a punctured tire. Uh, of course we have a spare tire, which is always a good solution, but you never know if that fails. We're gonna buy this one. It's a tire inflator and some products that reseals the tire. We probably should have already had this in Alaska and Canada, but better late than never. <laughs> Bomb. Safety first, people. Safety first. All right, we're now heading towards Utah and Arizona, leaving Vegas. Somewhere in that direction, guys, just a few more hours in that direction, is a beautiful spot on the north rim of the Grand Canyon that we can't wait to get to. So now, just drive that way. Good morning, guys. Welcome to the state of Utah. Cool out here. I don't know if you can see this, but no, you can't. Okay, <laughs> but I can see my breath. Anyway, yesterday we drove for another two to three hours after we left Las Vegas. Getting here was not very easy. This is the road. <laughs> Look at this. This is absolute insanity. Like, if I put my foot in this, look how deep this is. And yes, I am wearing Nike shoes just because it's easy when I only have to go outside for a little bit. Today, we're gonna head to Arizona and hopefully, hopefully, hopefully to our beautiful spot because right now I'm kind of like emotionally invested in the spot. We already drove for like a full day um, and we're not even there yet. It's a few more hours. Yeah, we'll see. Oh, now you can see my breath. Stay inside. It is freaking cold outside <laughs> i just put the heater on a bit more <laughs> almost put it on full blast are you uh, in for some coffee am i ever all right let's get cracking i gotta admit as we're getting closer to our destination i'm getting a bit more nervous because well you never know what these roads will bring and it's really remote i think it's about more than 24 miles of unpaved roads i am a little bit nervous but then i wonder why am i even doing this and the reason is there's nothing I'd rather be doing right now than having adventures out here. Wow, just look at the, I can't believe my eyes. Like, how crazy is this? This is nuts, guys. <laughs> look at this, like, whoa. Whoa, Utah, bringing all the views. After a few more hours of driving, we had left behind all signs of civilization. 
it had been hours since we'd seen a town or more than a handful of houses. It was just us and our van on the open road in the middle of nowhere with these huge red cliffs on the horizon. All right, this is it. Now we've got a couple of dozen miles of non-paved roads, washboard roads. It's crazy how much dust there is here while driving. This road is so bumpy that I feel like I should have worn a sports bra. <laughs> hey guys, is this the, the way to the Grand Canyon? Okay, do you know? How are the road conditions? Okay, yeah. Thanks guys! We've been on this dirt road for an hour. This particular road, this particular spot, is probably the furthest we've ever gone like into the wild. If you have to for some reason walk out of here, that's like a long, long walk. And it's so quiet out here. And except for the occasional cow, there is really nothing or nobody here, except for us. As the road started getting bumpier and bumpier, we started feeling like something was off. On iOverlander it said, no four wheel drive required. But now I'm really, really starting to doubt that, honestly. Please stop! Stop! Whenever Nike hits a big rock, I have to get out because it freaks me the heck out. Oh! And there is a small part of me that is like, maybe it's not very smart for us to be out here in our van, which isn't a 4x4. Maybe we shouldn't be out here. <laughs> um, but then again, there's this other part of me that's like, if we get there, and we should theoretically get there, and this is gonna be so worth it. So hopefully it will be worth it. Uh... Good luck with this one. Uh -oh. This is the bit where I'm honestly starting to doubt if Finny can do this, because this road is bad. Like, with the massive rocks and the steep incline. Uh, Looking back on this now, this far away from civilization and without even a cell phone signal, we should have turned back here. But we didn't because if all those people in similar vehicles got to the campsite and said they got there just fine, maybe it wasn't as bad as it looked? So despite the rocks, the dirt, and our better judgment, we tried to get Vinny up the hill, but the engine stalled. <sighs> the best solution would, I, I mean, I have no idea at this point. Stop. Oh. Um. Okay, stop. You don't have the grip for this. Or the speed. Look at that. You're slipping. Try it again. I'm nervous. My heart is beating out of my chest now. Come on, Penny, come on. Come on. Well, everything is out of our cabinets now. No one on iOverlander said it would be this hard. I thought it would be challenging because it's remote and what if something happens and lots of rocks and a punctured tire and stuff, but it's not supposed to be this hard. Yeah, I mean, this is definitely four wheel drive road. I hope I'm really wrong, but I think we're not in the right location. Like we've driven one and a half hours on these dirt roads and not going in the right direction that whole last bit all of it yeah. 
You're kidding? No, 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 no. That explains why that last bit was so hard. Yeah. I mean, we're not far off. We're just 10 kilometers from where we're supposed to. But there's no road. It, like, that we need to get going now because it's going to be, it's dark, gonna be dark in a few hours. We need to turn back now. And we're going to try to get our butts out of this part that we were never supposed to come to in the first place before it gets dark because these roads are bad enough in broad daylight. So basically that whole bit when we turned past that gate, that was wrong. Yeah. We should never have entered that gate. When we left the highway, we were wrong. Probably. The name of the campsite on iOverlander is called Salmalda Wilderness. If you enter the name of the campsite, Google Maps take you to this, this spot. But the actual name of the campsite is apparently Saddle Mountain Overlook. So I know I just I just never considered that the name would not be the same. Like, should have double checked. Now I feel I feel bad for putting us at risk. I'm upset about how carefully we tried to plan this because we were aware of the risks. And yet this still happened. Yeah. This could have gone horribly wrong had we continued. That's a little bit scary though, how easily you can trick yourself into messing up. But at least the views here, golden hour, are really beautiful. It's an absolutely stunning wild area. <laughs> yeah. Oh, better to laugh than cry about it. Two hours later, we were back at the gate and at this point we thought the hardest bit of the day was behind us. Alrighty, we are back at the gate where we started four hours ago. But we're back on the main road. Sun is just setting behind the mountains there. So at least we made it back in to, onto the main road today. <sighs> Potential hazards, falling trees, rolling rocks, flash flooding and own stupidity. <laughs> oh. And just when you think this day is over, going to the nice bit, that was a really big curveball. We get a engine problem. The check engine light just came on saying that we need to do maintenance quickly for the AdBlue system which is part of the diesel system. Okay. We're almost there. Eight miles and now the, the car says we need to do maintenance and there's something wrong. I can't believe that this day is even getting... There it is again. It does that every two minutes now. So yeah, there's something wrong. I don't know what. I don't know if we can continue. I mean, I think we can continue driving, but... So here's the situation, and it's not good. We wanted to go to the campsite that we've been trying to get to for two days straight now. But then that AdBlue light alert information thing went on. AdBlue is something that a diesel engine uses to be able to start the engine. We don't know if we switch the engine off now, if we're even gonna be able to start it back up again. So we can't switch the engine off because we might not be able to get it back on. And right now, we do not have cell phone reception. Zero. And we haven't and had any- is, we're so close right now. I mean- All right, let's have a look. We are at the junction where we are supposed to go up to get to the spot. But as you can see, it's not even snow, that's proper ice. It's proper ice. Because the spot we're trying to get to is up there, somewhere amongst those trees in the forest. We can get stuck. The engine might stop. We might not be able to restart the engine if we stall in the snow. And, and there is zero reception. I think, unfortunately, the only sensible option is to head back to uh, somewhere where there's a garage where somebody can check out what's going on. This really sucks. Like, I feel pretty horrible about it, to be honest, because it kind of feels like giving up. And at one point, I was just like, screw it. Screw the check engine light. Screw the ice. Let's just take Vinny and drive up the mountain and see if we can get to the spot and once we're at the spot we enjoy the spot and then afterwards we'll see what happens if something does end up happening in that scenario it would be entirely on us and we've already had that feeling once today and it's not the best feeling is it so we're gonna be adults 
Sometimes we have to be sensible and make adult decisions. And make adult decisions. The nearest Ford dealership is one and a half hour. It's in Lake Powell or something. It seems to be in the middle of nowhere. It's like not a major city. Uh, next option is Hurricane, which is a smaller city. Or we drive all the way back to Las Vegas, which from this Where point we were on, yesterday. Yeah, we were yesterday. Which from this point on would be four hours driving. Um, if we go to one of the small towns, like we might be stuck there for a while. And I think the best thing would be just to drive to Las Vegas. We'll get there by around midnight. We still have enough gas. We're going to Vegas, baby. <laughs> I didn't think we'd be back there so soon. <laughs> Time to marry that stripper, boys. Vegas, here I come. I, I still have hopefully, a few. Hopefully, hopefully I, we get there. I still have a few dollar bills as well. Oh, no, no, no. So with zero clue as to what was wrong with our engine, not even knowing if we make it to Las Vegas, we just started driving. I'm never, ever gonna forget this though. The time we had to drive to Las Vegas for hours, right away, because it was urgent and we couldn't shut the engine off even once. Like, it was paramount keep it running at all times. This is kind of ridiculous. How much depends on just that. All right, so we are at the Ford garage. It's currently almost midnight, so I don't think it's going to be possible to drive onto their parking lot. It's closed. Closed. How dare they? <laughs> Did they not know we were coming? So we are parked right across the street from Ford. We're not sure if we're allowed to be here, but if we have to, we can literally push the van <laughs> over there. At least we made it here. At least we made it here. Um. Good morning, guys. I did not sleep well at all. There is so much noise on this street. And honestly, I'm pretty worried as well about, curious and worried about what the problem with our van is. So I think it's just time to find out. Let's hope they can just reset our AdBlue system or something and we'll be out of here. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Yeah, still starting. Still so we can the drive same. across the street. <laughs> <laughs> we drove up to the Ford service station and were relieved that someone immediately started trying to diagnose the problem on our van which gave us some hope that it might be something small and that we might get out of there soon. But this is going to be expensive. And the diagnostic alone is already $400. And, and the mechanics is $200 an hour. It's like, okay. What and do you mean? Yeah, we'll see. Like, right now, I don't really care about the money. I just care about not being stuck here for a long time because that'll cost more money. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm nervous, but there's nothing else I can do right now. And sip this sub bar coffee <laughs> that was for free in the lobby as they check the car. All right, so there's good news and there is bad news. The bad news first, they cannot diagnose the problem. We have a European van and usually when they diagnose these problems, they have this little diagnostic tool thingy that they stick into the dashboard and the machine tells them exactly which, which error code is acting up in the car and they can go from there. But apparently on a European car, the American diagnostic tool thingy doesn't work. They think it, it's probably the fuel filter. That's where they usually start. They checked uh, with Ford, but they cannot get the part. Problem is that you do not have parts for European cars in the US or in Canada and North America in general. Nope. So you can already sense where this is going. We have to order the part back in Belgium, have it shipped over, have them replace it. And then there's a very high likelihood because of the specifics of the check engine light that that's not even gonna solve yeah, the that's... problem. The good news is it's nothing we did that caused this issue that we did yesterday out there. They bought us some extra time by resetting a few things in the system and we now have 200 miles that we can drive yep. 
they estimate we have about 200 miles that we can drive until the check engine light comes on again he said and then you probably have a 50 to 100 left before you like properly break down so at least i mean we're gonna stay in vegas we're not gonna drive around try our luck but at least we have the fan back now we can sleep in it they gave they gave finny back and we're gonna order the parts and everything but we can sleep in them and like drive around vegas at least and also number three of the good news they didn't charge us anything that was amazing. that garage is called Ford friendly, they are very friendly. They didn't charge yeah. us anything because they were like, well, we can't really even charge you for the diagnostic because we can't tell you what's wrong or how we're gonna fix it. So that is that is really great and really nice. So I'm just scared that this is going to be like last time and that this is gonna turn into a situation where we're waiting for parts and at least last time we knew it was a specific part. If we got the part, we could get out of there. And now it's like something's wrong, but we don't know what it is, and we can try stuff, but yeah. So this is definitely not how we imagined the wilderness adventure to be going, but at least it was a heck of an adventure that I for sure will never, ever forget. We're gonna stay here in Las Vegas until we get the fuel filter. Hopefully it won't take too long. Hopefully it will actually solve Vinny's issues. And as we are now behaving like responsible adults. The only way forward is to head to a casino and start gambling. So hopefully we can win a few thousand dollars to pay for all the repairs and the parts for Vinny. I think uh, that's the only sensible thing to do. Vegas, here I come. Keep your fingers crossed for us, guys, and we will see you in the next one. Bye bye.